glad you've decided to join me today. If this is your first time watching the show, welcome to the wonders of painting, and I am your host, Dumont Berg. Now, I always get asked in my comments section of my multitude of videos, what does it cost? How much does it take? What kind of paint do I need to start painting? And I'm going to show you the beginnerist of the beginningest. The beginnerist of the mostest beginningest. The most beginning. Far beyond evolution. Far beyond fancy paint. What I worked with as a kid. So first I'm going to start off with what I like to use as my paint. See, a lot of people say that maybe painting well takes good paint. Which is a complete myth. In truth, I actually paint with dollar store paint every day. And I'll show you right now what kind of paint I use to get on my painting path. So I'm going to start just with my uh, basic colors. Our basic colors are going to be our red slash orange, our black, yellow, blue slash purple slash indico slash violet. <clears throat> Blanco and Periwinkle. So now that we have all of our colors figured out, I'm just going to start by just. Oh, my apologies, folks. I didn't even show you. Today, I have actually decided that we are going to be working with a $1 set of watercolor that I have picked up from my local mart, and you could find it at your local mart too. Anyway, let's just hop right into this video here. So today I have actually decided that we're going to start off by doing a nice little transcendental painting. Maybe something that would reflect some of the things that I believed in in my life as Dumont Berg. So we're going to start off just by drawing out a little bit of the sky, you know. A nice blue coat that can just start us off. and really make us feel the mood and understand what exactly we want. So I'm going to start off with my watercolor. Start with a little bit of blue and a little bit of white, most likely. See, the white is very nice if you would like to make your blue a little bit lighter, but I don't use white by itself because usually you would use a liquid white. But since this is a beginner's tutorial, we don't need any liquid white. So today we're just going to use regular white that I have in my watercolors. And then we have a nice blue slash indica. I would say this is more navy blue or royal blue. Then we have yellow, orange, red, grain, indico, and black. Okay, so now we're just going to start off with a basic little piece of sketchbook paper, a little bit thicker than regular paper, so it doesn't fully absorb the, all of the liquid that we're going to use on it today. But we're just going to start off by wetting our brush getting a little bit of this blue, the nice blue that we're going to use for the sky. So we're going to start, we're just going to test it out on the paper. I have just found that this is quite a dark shade of blue, so maybe I should try a lighter shade. I'm not exactly sure what colors these shades are, maybe I should have tested it out first, but I didn't. Ah, so in the top right corner here, I've tested out my color and I've decided on the blue that I would like to use. For our painting, however, this may be a little bit of a dark color to use for the uh, sky. So we might save that this watercolor, actually, for when we do the actual water, which would make a lot of sense. So now that I have compiled a color that I would like to use for my sky, I will just start using X strokes crisscross back and forth on the page. Make sure to really work the paintbrush into the, into the canvas, just pushing in while making an X maneuver with your hand. Very lightly, very delicately, but making sure to press the paint into the paper. And 
continue on until the top of our page is finished, and then at that point, we can start thinking about bigger things, like mountains or streams. Now, I had left a little bit of room at the top so that I can put a little bit of a light source in there if I would like to. Maybe as the little kids do, drawing a light source at the top right-hand corner of their page. But we're going to give it a shot, because it's the easiest way to do it. And I am Dumont Berg, the king of simplicity. We're just going to actually take a little bit of this wet paintbrush, and we're just going to pull down. We're going to pull down on the paint, pulling it in, and making it one unified stroke. Pull. Now, this is great to do before you put your light source in because it can really just show the way of the aerodynamics of the condition of the earth and the simplicity of all nature and well-being. <sighs> if only everyone could grasp that simple concept. Nice. Now that sky will be a perfect tone and perfect color for us to use a night time. Maybe we're going to put in a moon perhaps and heck just beat the devil out of it that didn't work there we go now we start to work in a little bit of yellow over here in the corner and that is just going to set us a little bit of a light source so that our piece doesn't look completely dull The wonderful thing about indistinguishable light sources is you never know which way your path can lead. That's the wise words for the day. Anyway, let's start moving over into something a little bit more serious, like a mountain. Maybe the main piece. So, I believe I will use a smaller brush for this operation. Maybe the brush that comes standard with your watercolor. Now, I shall open up the black paint. <clears throat> and, without a doubt, I shall start making a border and painting around where my mountain tip will be, where the peak of my mountain will be. Now, the way that I like to show my mountains is by just taking the brush and sliding it down the page, just... Making a natural flow and showing natural shape and simplicity in nature. It's always the best way to go. Dumont Berg, 2020 for president. <laughs> that last thing was just a joke. <laughs> okay. <sighs> what a beautiful piece this is turning out to be. I just love the way that the coloration from the dragging of the paint just makes it look so real and just something from this planet. Oops. Ah, we have a great form and a great look at what could be our beautiful mountaintop. And we're going to leave that just as it is for now, leaving a little bit of room for us to fill in where we might want the sky to be later on, and future light sources, and so on, and so on. So now we're really just going to highlight the beauty of it all and throw a stream right there in the front, maybe right here. Just show a little bit more of nature and just how everything can root from simplicity. Okay. Alright, so now I'm going to draw out my water line, and after that, I will start adding water using the watercolor. So now that we've drawn in a little bit of a water line, I will just mark out the difference between where our land will be over here, and where our water can be over here. Now, I believe that we should clearly mark our water line, so that when we come in here with the water, with the watercolor, it just doesn't mix with the regular paint, and it makes it look more beautiful. So we're going to get our blue plenty wet, making sure to get lots of water in it. Hence the name watercolor. 
I do love how the watercolor just makes a very natural color. It coincides with my earthy side. That's nice. Just dragging down the paper. Just pulling down. Pull. Making sure to pull that water in one direction to just show the natural flow of water and just how it actually works. So I have actually decided to switch over to a larger brush to finish with my paint. To finish with my watercolor, I apologize. Just so that we can start making a more natural color and showing off the true beauties in nature. Now if you get a little bit of the black from the paint inside of, inside of your watercolor, just remember, happy accidents, not true problems in life. These are just minute little details that won't matter in the long run. Just small little flecks of dirt, maybe, have gotten in our water, we'll say. We're not quite sure what it could be, but it could be whatever the eye wants it to be. Now, I decided that I would like mine to be dirt, since I have gotten a little bit of my black paint inside of my watercolor. But that's natural. That's real life. We do see things inside of water that shouldn't be. Okay, so now that we have set aside a basic region here for the water, we, like, we need to now outline the water with a little bit of shrubbery and other things that would grow. So I wipe off my old brush, and now we are going to work towards the green a little bit more. So with the green, it may help if you pour it out, but it all really just depends on the person. A lot of people just like to dip right from the bag, and <laughs> that works perfectly well too. Ah, now that we have our green freshly opened, we are just going to Slightly get a little bit on the tip of the brush, just loading it up, not too much, but not too little. And we're just gonna tap around. So far, this is the update on my painting. I have a nice undefined source of light with a little bit of background, maybe a Hmm, maybe it's summer night, maybe 9 p.m. Eastern time. Then we have our nice mountainous structure, along with a little lake in the bottom, maybe, and some shrubbery growing around it. Why, how beautiful this is turning out to be, but we do need to highlight a couple things about the shrubbery. It doesn't matter if there's a little bit of green residue on there, because we will be just tapping the green again, but using a little bit of yellow this time. And this time, the yellow will be used actually to highlight the colors of the bushes. So now I will begin to mix a, whi a white and a green to make a little bit of a light green so that we can tap in a little bit of grassland. So I have my green poured out onto my palette, now I shall add a little bit of white. A little bit of how it never does you wrong. So that I now have a color that I can use as grass and other shrubbery that goes around the bottom. Make sure to load the paintbrush up with that lighter color. You don't want to blend it in with your other bushes. So now I'm going to go through with my last step, and I'm just going to fill in where, I had, where it hadn't been filled in before. I have set aside an area over here for my green grassland, and now I'm going to fill in the rest of my sky. Thank you all for coming and joining me on my trip as we painted this beautiful painting showing a lone mountain that strives in its own environment with a grassland, a little bit of water, and some shrubbery with a basic nighttime sky and a night, maybe 9 p.m. Eastern time on a summer's night. Thank you all for joining. I am Dumont Berg, and I'm glad that you have joined me today. Have a good night.